they're not all built the same. Uh, there's 50 different softwares to choose from. There's uh, the management aspect, which is extraordinarily important. Um, there's this very odd um, thought process um, in the industry that you can just go out and create an affiliate program and all these affiliates are going to come on in and join your program and that just couldn't be further from the truth and welcome to new episode of digital Car coffee marketing brew and i'm your host brett dicer and as always if you do like this podcast just subscribe to all your favorite podcasting apps and youtube as well it always helps but this week we're going to be talking about affiliate marketing the favorite thing people don't really want to talk about because it's sometimes hard to do because you're relying on normal people to help spread the word most of the time, but not always, but most of the time you're getting just your regular customers to spread the word. But I have Dustin here and he is an expert in this. He's been doing it for many years. He is a nerd as he says himself about this and he just loves about this. So I'm happy to have him on the show. So welcome to the show, Dustin. Hey, appreciate you having me, Brett. Yes. And the first question I ask all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? Coffee, hundred percent, and uh, cowboy coffee if if it's available. I I actually enjoy uh, adding a little grit to my morning. Like I'm straight black. Uh, I put nothing in it, and uh, I like the bitterness. Nah, so you just like to boil the water with the coffee grounds and be like, you know what? We're just gonna have both of them together to get as much caffeine out of this I, thing as I, I can. I chew it up as I drink it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> No worries. I gave a brief introduction to your expertise, but can you give the listeners a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, you got it, man. 13 years of affiliate marketing and digital marketing experience. I've uh, I've ran merchant programs and my own agency over the last five, and I help small companies, SMBs, uh, especially in the SaaS department, to grow and create an affiliate program that actually works. And that's, that's what I'm passionate about. I, I actually teach a course now that teaches everything that I know and uh, help giving back to the community of affiliate marketing as, as we know it today. All right. And what has changed in affiliate marketing since the explosion of AI and the pandemic in general? Because the pandemic has, as we've all said, changed everything. Sure thing. Uh, the pandemic, first of all, um, Affiliate marketing was one of those fields that actually blew up. So in, instead of being a detriment to um, most of society, affiliate marketing actually profited uh, enormously, overshooting their expected um, growth in, in affiliate um, just because COVID brought everything online so much more and uh, revenue was generated online uh, significantly um, increased for affiliate marketing. So, uh, and then I forgot the other question, Brett. What was the other part of that? Oh, yeah. AI is everywhere and affiliate marketing is getting easier because content can be produced via AI significantly faster and uh, there are quite a few programs out there chat GPT of course and then you've got things like Jasper AI and some others that are just absolutely killing it out there and helping affiliate marketers produce content at a much faster click got you and so do you have any like latest stats like just an overview stats or just like affiliate market you said it blew up is it still blowing up now as we've seen it, or has it kind of like plateaued a little bit? Are we seeing that type of like slowdown? Uh, there, is, there is no end in sight to its uh, uptick in growth. Uh, companies every day are figuring out the power of having a army of sales reps that are paid on a commission basis, because that's exactly what affiliate marketing does. And uh, no, the it, it continues to scale. I want to say 2023 is destined for some uh, insane number, like $12 billion coming through the affiliate channel altogether. And um, I like to say a, a good affiliate program 
will cover an additional 20% of your revenue that you have existing by just adding in those kinds of partnerships that are going to be a good fit for your product. Yes, and that actually leads into my next question. How do PR pros and marketers create a great affiliate program? Because everybody can create one, but not all of them are good. Oh, absolutely. And they're not all built the same. Uh, there's 50 different softwares to choose from. There's uh, the management aspect, which is extraordinarily important. Um, there's this very odd um, thought process um, in the industry that you can just go out and create an affiliate program and all these affiliates are going to come on in and join your program. And that just couldn't be further from the truth. Like companies very quickly realize that it doesn't matter how good your offer is or how, uh, how you think partners are going to swarm on in, um, you have to beat the streets and get the word out about your program and expand your brand. Um, and it's a lot of hard work. Affiliate managers, affiliate management is a full-time job if you're doing it right and you really want to expand with it um, because uh, you can never have enough recruitment to your program. So that's, does that mean for creating a great affiliate program, is to actually have like good incentives? Is it good to have like a great onboarding process? Like what other things should marketers know if they're just trying to start at, it out? Yeah, uh, absolutely. The All of the above to answer your question. Yes, you have to have an appealing offer. You have to check your competitors. You have to make sure that your competitors um, are not offering something well above what you're offering to your partners. And if they are beating you out, you just can't handle those margins, then you have to figure out other ways to incentivize them. Maybe that's free accounts. Maybe that's free products. Maybe that's um, a, an SEO link, a backlink to them. Just whatever you have to utilize to get them into your program rather than sending traffic to your competitors, it's what you're going to have to learn how to figure out. Um, so, um, best, best case scenario is getting help before you create a program and just try to, uh, make it happen on your own. It's almost always a recipe for disaster. If you don't get some kind of consultant in there to, to help you build this thing out right the first time. Yeah. You know, like you said before, how AI has changed it all. How can you, I guess, implement AI into that? affiliate marketing where it actually is useful yeah from the brand's perspective of things uh using ai uh it it hasn't hit the ground like it has for building content on the publication side so the publishers are using ai every single day to help them create 1500 word blog posts in a matter of minutes rather than hours or days uh, that it has been in the past. But on the affiliate management side, most of the tools are from scraping websites and contact information. That's that's probably best where we're utilizing AI is uh, building lists uh, a lot easier and building lists to contact the right publishers that are right for your program. Um, but nothing's nothing's perfect at this point um you you could uh you could search by you know keywords that might be super relevant to your industry and try to find a bunch of affiliates that are ranking for those keywords but uh, a lot of this is still some some manual processes that you're going to have to get into and and you still need a full-time affiliate manager to handle all of that and make decisions so ai isn't perfect from this perspective yet uh, but it is getting better every day and what are some old school ways of actually doing affiliate marketing so we talked about the new ways but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of old school ways that actually are really just as effective or even more effective right now than ai no doubt uh some of the best old school ways is just simply take your biggest keyword that your brand wants to rank for and uh, type it into Google and let's look at the search results. Take the top 30 pages that are ranking there today and let's figure out which 
each one of those is actually an affiliate or if they're a competitor, uh, we're not going to have to worry about it. Uh, but if they are affiliate, they have affiliate links, they have outbound links that might uh, be organic. These are all potential partners and uh, you want that list of 30 and you're going to have to figure out who the right contact is at each one of those. So one of my favorite tactics is I build a giant list first of, of all these keywords and people that are ranking there. And then I go to each individual one and I use a tool called hunter.io. It's a Chrome extension and it will give me a list of people that work at that company and their email addresses and this thing's free and it's super easy to use. Uh, I copy that. I, I go to LinkedIn and I figure out who the right person is to contact at that company. And then I go into um, emailing and set them up with a drip campaign that that's going to get their attention somehow. So um, that, that's the old school way. And that's still the way I go about doing a lot of my processes throughout the day for the clients I work with. And um, I, I, I don't see that changing in the, in the near future. And, and uh, automation is helping that process get faster and cleaner. Uh, but there's always going to be something to be said about, you know, manually having uh, that connection to the person you're reaching out to. And then when messaging those people, I I know the easier way is to do like an automated message, but a lot of people can figure out that it's automated. So how do you like try to message as many people as you can without feeling like you're a robot? Yeah. Good question. Um, I don't have a great answer for it today. Um, it seems like the more I try to shoot out that wide net approach, the worse my results get. Um, if you have a wide net approach uh, and are batching and, and blasting through your email service, uh, expect a 10% response rate or less. That's, that's what you can expect. Now, if you cater each one of those messages, especially the first message that you're reaching out with, with something that is pertaining to their LinkedIn profile or their website that they are utilizing or working at, whatever it may be. If you, if you do something just in one or two sentences that shows them that you took the time to care about them, your response rate will dramatically go up into that 30 and 40% if you're doing it right. Um, so that's something that you should be always keeping in mind if, if you're failing at recruiting affiliates, get more personalized and you're going to have a better success rate. Mm. So, I mean, could it be just like batching it down to like maybe like 10 a day and then doing some research and then that could actually help? Because I feel like we always try to do a lot as PR pros and marketers are like, we're just going to do a hundred a day. We're going to just like look like we're awesome. And then it's like what you said, 10% or lower actual response rate. So would it yeah. be just like niching it down to be like, let's say we do 10 a day. Let's say we do five a yeah. day and then like really like customize that message. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit different in the PR space because you're giving a pitch and you've got, you know, that two, three sentence pitch that you're always bringing to their attention. And it, and it's kind of similar in the affiliate space as well, except your pitch uh, has to cater to giving them money as commissions if, for the sales that they're bringing in rather than like a, a flat fee that you're willing to pay. So um, the message is definitely going to be a little bit, I think you can get away with it a little bit easier in PR than you can with affiliate. And uh, the reason is it is more of a like PR uh, folks are more accustomed to getting those kinds of requests where affiliates um they get hundreds of them each day from each from individual brands depends on how big they are uh to go and promote new products so uh it can be a little testy and i think the response rate um suffers because of that and then like content wise to actually like advertise it should they be using like podcasts should they be using like email newsletters to actually like generate that stuff besides just like using what you said, should they be using the other stuff to actually bring awareness to the affiliate program at the same time? They can, 
I haven't seen a huge uptick in getting additional exposure on joining an affiliate program. The, the best affiliates are going to figure out that there's a, a vertical that they need to add to their website or go and promote. Uh, maybe they're digital marketers or media buyers that want to get into a specific niche, and then they're going to research those brands. Um, and whatever comes up first as like the best affiliate program for those verticals is the list that you want to be on. So getting on some of those lists could be helpful, but it, it hasn't been a gigantic uptick in my opinion. Now, um, you might find some success in like taking your vertical, let's say, um, uh, let's say you sell uh, mushrooms, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, terrible example. We'll stick with it. Mushrooms. Um, uh, you just say mushroom affiliate program and you bid on that campaign. You know, maybe it's like a quarter, 50 cents or something uh, on Google. But uh, people that are trying to get into that space might accidentally look that up and click and go to your affiliate program. That might be one successful story but um really nothing beats manual labor of going out and finding the people that are actually ranking on google first and getting their attention somehow because uh, the ones that are just going to come in off a whim um few and far between are they going to be really worth a lot as an affiliate and then what are some ways of not doing to create affiliate program like if we've said like all the great ways but what are some things just to avoid entirely just so you don't waste your time i'd say the biggest pitfall folks go through is not coming up with a solid game plan to begin with so if they just create an affiliate program and and figure like people are just going to sign up and give it an arbitrary like 10 percent uh, uh commission rate um without a plan of like looking at their competitors first and seeing what their competitors are often, uh, that, that program is much more likely to fail. But if you go in, get a consultant, like get, get fresh eyes on your brand and uh, um, make sure that they know what best practices are for this industry and uh, have them come up with a plan to, you know, get the right affiliate manager in your in your system to be that representative or um, just specifically which platforms are going to be the best for your product uh, that's important like um, you know, there's 50 platforms to choose from out there and if and if you choose the wrong one that isn't to your specifications of what you need for last click or first click attribution um, you're going to go down a, a bad road. So pre-planning is the most important step of it all. And I can't emphasize enough to get somebody who's a consultant that's done it time after time again um, to help you in this journey. Because if you try to do this on your own, you're going to have it in your own brand lens and uh, it's going to be an uphill battle. Mm. So would you also say like going through the affiliate programs that, that you may actually be doing and seeing like what's difficult to go through, how many clicks do you go through and seeing like from your own personal experience, like how people may drop off? Because I feel like a lot of times we just like set it up. We don't actually test ourselves. And we're like, this is yeah. awesome. And then you're like, why is nobody signing up? Yeah. Yeah. Test and retest is always important in the affiliate channel to make sure all the tracking is right. Every platform out there is going to help hold your hand during this situation. Um, so that shouldn't be that big of a problem. Um, you can get an affiliate program launched in a day. I've done it before, but uh, some, some are a little bit more dynamic in the tracking values and uh, a little more aggressive with uh, commission rate and uh, adjustments to commission rate like they might pay a CPA and they might pay a a revenue share and it can get really complicated and some programs have taken two months for me to launch so it's a wide range it just depends on what you need out of those partnerships um, but again that game plan coming up with the, your ideal magic wand scenario first and then getting somebody that can execute and make that plan come, that vision come to life 
is super necessary for the success of an affiliate program early on. Hmm. And then for just maintaining it, what are some of the best tips to maintain affiliate programs? I feel like you could start it and then it's great and everything and woo, we launched it. But the maintaining part is probably the hardest part because you want this for like 10 years or longer, I'm pretty sure. Yes, for for sure. Um, maintenance is a matter of uh, taking your top affiliates that are sales active and making sure that they are taken care of. Do not let these guys slip through your fingers or go to a competitor. Uh, do whatever you have to to take your top 10 affiliates out there and continue to work on them. Ask them what they need from you. Ask them uh, what you guys can be doing better. If Set up landing pages for them. Give them more assets for marketing. Give them email swipes so that they can tap into their audience of subscribers. Um, do whatever you can um, for the sales active af affiliate partners, especially early on, and that's going to give you a better vision of what new affiliates are going to be looking for. And that way you can automate those things that they are looking for when they come into the program and you get new partners that could be difference makers. Um, so it's a continuation of you know, getting on monthly calls with your top affiliates, um, and just listening to what their needs are uh, it can be super beneficial to your program in the long run. So yeah, almost like highlighting your top sellers and making sure that they're taken care of will actually help with your affiliate marketing in the long run. So would that be like, like you said before, but also like highlighting it through email newsletters or something like that, your top sellers and like making them feel like special because I'm pretty sure when you make them feel special, they feel like, they're part of the process instead of like just a number in the affiliate marketing cog. Hey, absolutely. The, the more personalized you can get, like, for example, I take everybody that's ever been an affiliate, a sales active affiliate in a program that I've run and I have them in my personal CRM. So, uh, they, I, I have notes in there about what verticals they're interested in. And I have notes about, uh, any kind of personal message that we've had in the past, maybe when he went out to dinner or had a drink, I'm writing all those notes down for the future so that I can go back to that relationship and tap into it. If I have a new client that would be a fit for them or um, even for the client that we're existing and working with, like I pass that off into the CRM for the next affiliate manager that takes over so that they have a good understanding of where that relationship left off when I left that company. So CRMs are almost, uh, are highly suggestion. Uh, even if you're using just an Excel um, sheet, uh, it, it is super important to keep track of your partnerships along with the, um, your deals for the people that are buying your product. Um, and if you can piggyback off of your existing um, CRM that, that you're using, whether it be a HubSpot or Salesforce, if you can add the affiliate channel and partnerships into that and just tag it in a certain way, that'll, that'll help uh, ease the cost of, of not having to buy a CRM uh, for the affiliate program itself. Mm -hmm. And are there some tools that could help manage this? I know you said Hunter for like finding people, but is there mm -hmm. some tools just to maintain the affiliate programming that marketers and PR pros should know about? Uh, I, I'm i always a big uh, pusher of uh, SEMrush. SEMrush is almost always the first tool that I use and uh, for the keyword research and the sites that are ranking for those keywords. That's how I build my biggest list is using SEMrush. Um, and then there are a few uh, tools out there that are super helpful. Um, PubRecruiter.com is helpful. Um, PublisherDiscovery.com is super helpful. Um, and within each affiliate network, you're gonna have a large publisher pool that exists already that are on the network and that you can reach out through their platform. So when you go with an impact or a share sale, you have a baked in uh, list of good affiliates that 
are in the system that you can tap into. But um, I would strongly advise and not not trying to reach out to the masses, uh, find the ones that are going to be relevant to your vertical and niche um, that are in the platform itself. Uh, so those are those are some of the tools that I use every time I, I start go recruiting for a program. Mm. And what is your prediction for the future of affiliate marketing in the next five years? Hmm. Solid question. I, I believe it's going to get even more relationship based as AI starts taking over a lot of capabilities of, of what publishers and affiliate managers are doing. Um, I, I think the relationship portion of affiliate management is going to actually grow because you're going to find ways to make more time for more interaction personally. Um, and so those websites that might not be getting the most love right now because you just don't have time as an affiliate manager. Um, now that time that you have been absorbed creating um, creating reports for executives or, or doing your daily report evaluations, um, a lot of that time is going to be um, caught up and you'll be able to have more phone calls with partners. So um, don't think that affiliate management is going away. It's going to be a, a long time coming because people are going to continue to crave that kind of personal relationship with the brands that they're working with. And I think it's going to be even stronger and the demand for affiliate managers is just going to continue to grow. Mm. So, I mean, it's almost like affiliate managers should understand how to use AI because AI could be just their little assistant doing most of the back-end work while they do most of the relationship management. Absolutely. Um, keep that in mind. Virtual assistants are also super beneficial. If if you're getting paid full-time as an affiliate manager, um, you should consider looking into a VA to do the work that you really don't want to do all that often. And AI is going to help with this in the future, uh, but virtual assistants can get that done job done today for you. And if you train them well, if you find a good one, don't let them go. Get, just you know, keep them on board for 10 hours a week to recruit on a bigger basis or uh, do the things, the tedious processes that you don't want to do and that's going to be a great time saver for you as well. All right. Where can people find you online to learn more about this? Yep. Uh, my online course is performancemarketingmanager.com. Um, it is a, it is everything I know about affiliate marketing smushed into eight hours of the video training with all the templates that I, I utilize on a daily basis for my programs and along with a community of affiliate managers that are working together to help pass each other good leads on affiliates and you know sharing their industry knowledge so it's a great community to be a part of um and then for for me personally if you want 15 minutes of my time i give it away for free so go to dustinhouse.com pod 15 and get a free 15 minute call with me and i'll answer any questions you have about affiliate marketing all right. Any final thoughts for the listeners? Boy, I don't know. I've, I've said a lot here. Um, I don't. No, nah, I really don't, Brett. I think you've asked, asked a lot of really good questions here, and I got to brain dump a bit. Um, I appreciate you having me, and this has been great, man. All right. Thank you, Dustin, for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew and sharing your knowledge on affiliate marketing. You got it. Take care, Brett. And thank you for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew. As always, please subscribe to all your favorite podcasting apps for this podcast and subscribe on YouTube, Rumble, and everywhere else that, <laughs> that there is video to be had. And join us next month as we talk to another great knowledge in the PR and marketing world. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding your own affiliate marketing. See you next week. Later.